How was up y'all? It's Poppin' with Craig Nate Steve about to react to this Maddie Balls bit. It's titled, Every Allegation Against P. Diddy Explained. Okay, a few people have sent this to me and said, he went over some stuff you ain't talked about before. So, okay. But we're gonna see exactly what's explained in this bit. Let's watch. Ever since November of 2023, when Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit against rapper, businessman, and multi-millionaire P. Diddy, a multitude of allegations have come out against him. In the past couple of months, Diddy has been arrested, multiple more lawsuits have come out, and he also has multiple charges against him. And with everything that's come out against Diddy recently, it can get confusing when it comes to the details, making it hard to separate facts from fiction. So today I'm going to break down every single formal allegation that P. Diddy is facing. But first, we gotta understand a little bit more about Puff. Also, I just want to put a little disclaimer right here that obviously I'm going to be talking about some really dark and disgusting and sensitive topics, as I'm sure most of you are probably already aware, but I just wanted to warn you guys because it gets pretty He's graphic, probably going to so mention the little nine-year-old boy and yeah, haven't talked about that much because I just found out about it in a video <laughs> that I reacted to, so I don't even know about Fine. it. Fine, let's continue. Most of us know who Diddy is or know of Diddy, but we got to have a better understanding of who he is to truly understand these allegations. Diddy aka Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, or Sean Combs began his career in the 90s working at Uptown Records. A few years into his career, he was fired, so he then created his own label called Bad Boy Records in 93. He signed the notorious B.I.G., who was obviously a huge signee and made Puff very successful. He signed other artists like Faith Evans and had an in-house production team called The Hitman, who worked with artists like Usher, TLC, Mariah Carey, Aretha Franklin, and many more. Puff was already very successful, but then he decided to work on his own music. His first single charted for 28 weeks on the Billboard Hot 100, and his first album sold 561,000 copies first week. So Diddy was already wildly successful early on to his career in the music industry. Not only was he a successful artist, but he was also a powerful executive with tons of connections. He also had other business ventures, with one of his most successful ones being his partnership with Ciroc in which he helped them develop their brand in exchange for 50% of the profits. So if you didn't know much about Diddy, that's pretty much all you need to know. He's a rich, powerful, and successful man in the music industry and Hollywood in general. He's won a Guinness World Record for most successful rap producer in 1997. He's won three Grammys, and he's also credited for cultivating artists like Biggie, Mary J. Blige, okay. and Usher. I kept it brief for simplicity's sake, obviously, but I really wanted to emphasize his power, his influence, and his wealth. Also, I said earlier he was a multi-millionaire, but they have even estimated his net worth to be a billion dollars, so Diddy is very rich. Throughout his career, P. Diddy has also had quite a few controversies. In 1999, he was sued by Nas's manager after Diddy attacked him, for which they settled out of court for $500,000. In 2003, his clothing oh, brand, man. Sean John, was accused of violating Everybody labor, labor laws Sorry, as though. the factories were based in Honduras. The National Labor Committee said that the employees were forced to work overtime, were paid sweatshop wages, and that the bathrooms were locked. In 2007, Diddy was sued for battery after he punched Gerard Rich Rechnitzer at a nightclub. No idea if I said his name right. And there's even that. more alleged violent crimes that he's committed throughout his career. For example, Diddy's ex Cassie Ventura, who we will talk more about later, said that Diddy blew up Kid Cudi's car, to which a spokesperson for Kid Cudi said that it was true. On top of that, for years, Diddy has been theorized to be involved in both Pac and Biggie's deaths. Tupac's murder suspect even claimed that Diddy wanted him to kill both Pac and Suge Knight. There's even the time Eminem said, the day you put out a hit's the day Diddy admits he put out the hit that got Pac killed. On top of that, Diddy even admitted that the death of Biggie helped his own music career. Even as recently as 2017, he was sued for sexual harassment by his chef, and the suit was settled out of court. So for a long time, Diddy has been a very shady guy in the music industry, with tons of conspiracy theories following him throughout his career. And over the years as he would continue to have these controversies, nothing would compare to what happened recently. In November of 2023, singer Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit against Diddy that would set off a chain of legal issues for Puff. She said, after years of silence and darkness, I'm finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. Cassie met Diddy in 2005 when she was 19 and he was, I believe, 36, and she signed to Diddy's label in 2006. Not only did she sign to the label, but she signed a 10 album deal. She basically signed her life away, and Diddy made her sign this so that he could have more control over her career. So, so I wanted to get us all together so we could get this. Um, Everybody can hear from me. Um, focus and excited. I don't know about the project. I wanted, you know, Cassie to um, um, 
everybody just be casting and you go on they had an on and off relationship from this time until about 2018. In the lawsuit, Cassie claims that not too long after she met him, he would give her drugs to make her compliant, he would beat her multiple times a year, and he forced her to have sex with male prostitutes while he filmed. He very quickly became very controlling of her, as obviously he was in control of her career, and he would also pay for her car, apartment, clothes, and also had access to her medical records. Apparently, a few years into the relationship, he would coerce her into having sex with male prostitutes while he watched, filmed, and pleasured himself. This stuff is really disgusting and disturbing, but basically Diddy was a cuck. And she said that this went on for years. In the suit, there was also mention of the 2016 incident where he hid Cassie in a hotel, then he passed out. She tried to leave, but he woke up and followed her and started hitting her, as seen in the security camera footage. Apparently, Diddy even paid the hotel $50,000 for the footage. In 2018, at the end of their relationship, he apparently forced himself into her apartment and R-worded her, after which she finally left him for good. Also included in the suit, apparently Diddy dangled one of Cassie's friends over a 17th floor hotel balcony, and the suit also touches on when Diddy tried to blow up Kid Cudi's car in 2012 because Cudi was briefly talking to Cassie. To like I said, did. one of Cudi's spokespeople said, this is all true. One of Diddy's lawyers, Ben Braffman, said, Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Miss Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million, under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. In response, one of Cassie's lawyers said, Mr. Combs offered Ms. Ventura eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of this lawsuit. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's pretty disgusting to say that this was just full of blatant lies because Cassie was seeking a payday when there's literally footage of Diddy True. beating her in the hotel. And that footage actually wasn't even out at the time, which means... The dude was just lying. Like I said though, Cassie was suing Giddy for $30 million and apparently the day after they filed the lawsuit, it was settled out of court. It was settled for an undisclosed amount and both parties said they wanted to settle it in a pleasant and friendly way. There was nothing public about how they settled it. We don't know how much money Cassie was paid, if any, or even why in particular they settled. Ben Cesario from the New York Times said, for Diddy, the settlement quickly shuts down what could have been a risky and potentially embarrassing process of legal discovery in which reams of evidence are made public and a possible trial. And Cassie also likely didn't want to relive all of her trauma, which is why she probably was willing to settle rather than sit through a trial. But thanks to Cassie's courage for coming forward about this, a multitude of lawsuits followed. Just five days after Cassie's lawsuit, another lawsuit was filed accusing Diddy of drugging and essaying a college student at Syracuse University in 1991 and filming it. Then apparently Diddy would show the footage to people as revenge porn. Shortly after that, a third lawsuit was filed accusing Diddy and Aaron Hall of R-wording the accuser and her friend. Apparently following the assault, Diddy pulled up to the girl's residence and got violent, even choking the girl till she passed out. After this suit came out, Diddy's spokesperson again claimed they were lies, saying these are fabricated claims falsely Not alleging misconduct from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute. This is nothing but a money grab. Because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for anonymous accusers who lie without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. Following this, on December 6, another lawsuit was filed in which they claimed in 2003 a 17-year-old was gang R-worded by Diddy. Harvey Pierre, and an unnamed assailant. The victim says they talked her into getting on a private jet to New York, drugging her, and then assaulted her. In this lawsuit, the girl even provided pictures, making the claims all that more believable. In December, after all of these allegations, Diddy finally made a statement on his Instagram saying, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely be clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my nah. family, and for the truth. But it's safe to say Diddy's statement was not well received, and more awful allegations continued to come out. In February of this year, the producer Lil Rod filed a huge $30 million lawsuit in which he accused Diddy of harassing and threatening him for over more than a year. He also allegedly had footage of Diddy and his people committing crimes and doing SA. Lil Rod was accusing Diddy of what they said was RICO level charges and named people such as Diddy, his son Justin, Lucian Grange, the CEO of Universal Music Group, Ethiopia, Haptamarium, 
if uh, that's how you say it, I have no idea. The CEO of Motown Records, Chalice Recording Studios, Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Koram, and Diddy's companies as defendants. So basically what he's saying is all these people I just listed and the companies were involved in these crimes alongside Diddy. I do think it's important to note though that Lucien Grange and UMG were eventually removed from the lawsuit. Lil Rod lived with Diddy for months at a time and was also on a yacht Diddy rented for multiple weeks. He said that he witnessed many of Diddy's awful acts. Apparently Lil Rod was also the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. When he complained to Diddy's chief of staff, she said, you know, Sean will be Sean. Rod even said that Diddy was trying to make him have sex with Stevie J and promised him that he would win a Grammy if he did. According to the suit, Rod said he was also assaulted by a cousin or assistant of rapper Young Miami. He was harassed and assaulted by Oscar winner Cuba Gooding Jr. and obtained footage of a rapper and an R&B singer whose names have been redacted from the complaint consorting with underage girls and sleep workers. Finally, Rodney said that the Did reason no one has come forward with anything over the past few decades is because Diddy has footage of every person that has attended his parties that he can use to blackmail them. So Rodney accused Diddy of a ton of crimes, plenty of which we'll touch on more later. But this lawsuit was huge, especially because he was naming names and said he had evidence for all of this. Diddy's attorney said that the suit includes reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction. Following this, two of Diddy's houses were raided by the feds. They said, earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI at Los Angeles, HSI at Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. Both of his sons, Justin and Christian, were also handcuffed during the raids. So clearly, either because of the lawsuits or before them, Diddy was under investigation by the feds. After the raid, CNN obtained the video of Diddy attacking Cassie in the hallway, to which Diddy decided to apologize for, since this was the only evidence so far that had been released to the public. It's so difficult to reflect on no. the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. But I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. On May 22nd, a few days after the video came out, a former model accused Diddy of drugging and essaying her in another lawsuit. A couple of days later, another woman came forward accusing Diddy of four instances of SA from the mid-1990s to the early 2000s. He was also accused of battery and assault in this suit as well. Most recently, another suit came out where Diddy was accused of drugging and R-wording another woman. According to ABC, this is at least the 12th lawsuit filed against Diddy since Cassie came out with hers back in November of 2023. As of recording this, no more have come out, but it's very possible no more, more people will speak that out. Like the reason all now, of these people crazy. came forward around the same time the is because of a new law know, passed in New York called the Adult Survivors Act. Basically what this did was give adult victims, people who were 18 years or older during their alleged time of abuse, the ability to file civil lawsuits in New York, even if any statutes of limitations had run out. If you don't know what that means, basically if you're an adult in New York who got essayed. Before this new act, usually there was about a three-year window where you could file a suit. As far as I understand it, I am by no means a lawyer, but this is what it said on Google. So now with the Adult Survivors Act, victims had a one-year window to file suits and it's set to expire this November. So it isn't like this is some big coordinated mastermind attack against Diddy. This new act, coupled with Cassie's coming out in her lawsuit, seems to be what motivated these victims to come forward. And just as it seemed like it couldn't get worse for Diddy, the feds showed up at his front door. Most recently, Diddy was arrested by the feds on September 16th of this year, based on a sealed indictment filed by the Southern District of New York. By the way, indictment is basically just fancy talk for serious charges. The US attorney, Damian Williams said, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. So like the U.S. attorney implied, there are three main charges that Diddy is currently facing. Racketeering conspiracy, 
trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. His first charge is racketeering, which is defined as a set of illegal activities aimed at commercial profit that may be disguised as legitimate business deals. In the indictment, they say that Diddy abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. To accomplish this, they claim that he used his employees and his businesses to create a criminal enterprise that indulged in the things that the U.S. attorney mentioned earlier. So basically what they were saying was all of the businesses that Diddy had created over the years for his music career, his clothing career, and everything else like that, he was using those and his employees to help cover up and do the things he wanted to do. And like we know, many of the things he wanted to do included assaulting women. The attorney even referred to Diddy's business, Combs Enterprise, as a criminal organization because Diddy had many of his employees working to cover up everything he was doing. They said that employees engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other activities, trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, coercion, and enticement to engage in prostitution, narcotics offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The indictment says that to make women cooperate, Diddy would give them drugs, threaten their careers, and also threaten violence. They said from 2009 and continuing for years, Combs assaulted women by, among other things, striking, punching, dragging, throwing objects at, and kicking them. And this is where we get to one of the more popular parts of the indictment, the freak offs. The indictment reads, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sex acts with male commercial sex workers that Combs referred to as freak offs. Freak offs were elaborate and produced performances that Combs arranged, directed, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. The lawsuit even said that these freak offs would last multiple days and that he would pump them with drugs to keep them compliant. But and the then, when they well. needed to recover after the multiple day freak offs, he would give the victims IV fluids, which is insane. Of course, they also mentioned that law enforcement seized various freak off supplies, including narcotics and more than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Of course, this part went viral. It is kind of funny, but it also goes to show the scale of what Diddy was doing. The feds also found multiple firearms in Diddy's houses that he used to threaten his victims. And to top it all off, they said that he has been doing most of this since at least 2008. That's nearly 20 years of terrible crimes Diddy's been committing. And I know there's like a ton of jokes about this whole situation, but in reality, this is like some disgusting supervillain type of stuff. And who knows how many victims he has total. And then of course, there were the two other counts he was charged with trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion. He really thought he was going to get away with this forever? Prostitution. Both of these had very similar themes and all the information was pretty much the same as we discussed earlier. But what I want to point out about the indictment is that if the U.S. government is indicting you, they probably have pretty good evidence. Apparently, federal prosecutors have above a 95% conviction rate, so things really aren't looking too good for Diddy. They even claimed that they had a ton of recordings and they also seized a bunch of electronic recording devices in the raid that they did earlier this year. At the end of the press conference given by the U.S. attorney, he said this. Sean Cohn stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. The government says in the indictment that oh, they recorded these it. actions and Legal Eagle People explained how forward. the government could go after them. And there is a federal crime called misprison of felony, which is defined in 18 U.S.C. Section 4. Quote, whoever having knowledge of the actual commission of a felony cognizable by a court of the United States conceals and does not as soon as possible make known the same to some judge or other person in civil or military authority under the United States shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than three years or both. Mm. So if a person has knowledge of a felony and conceals it and doesn't report it to be authorities that person has committed a crime so this investigation is far from over after being arrested diddy has been denied bail multiple times and he has also been placed on super watch he's also in the same cell as sam bankman freed or fried or however you say his name which is pretty interesting his lawyer has tried to suggest multiple times that he's innocent which at this point is honestly just ridiculous mr combs is a fighter He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent. I don't want to hear him no more. I played the South currently facing at least 11 lawsuits, settled one of them, and is also facing an indictment, all of which allege themes of violence, essay, 
racketeering, trafficking, prostitution, and many more. None of so these are the crimes. Racketeering. Because I've seen so many people say like, oh, he was just a freak. What's the problem with him being a freak? Are y'all dumb? Or maybe they don't have all the details. I feel like a lot of people don't really know uh, the specifics of what took place. They're only going based on the headlines. So I feel like this is a very useful video because people can get the actual details in one place, you know? Because, I mean, I've reacted to videos about it, but they briefly talk about, you know, what occurred in a lot of those vids. But it's like, it's not just being a freak. Okay? And many more. Because they even talk about Carisha and how, oh, she was just involved. She was just having sex. No, she was likely involved with all this shit, too. And had knowledge of these crimes being committed and didn't say anything. These are all crimes. Do these suits contain any information about other celebrities? Except for Lil yeah. Ronnie's, which has been amended, like I said, to leave out some bigger names. It's possible we will learn about other celebrities or famous he's people involved sure. in Diddy's that freak offs or me. other actions in the investigation. But as of now, this is but all he's, he's been accused of, Diddy, legally so speaking. So while there are all these rumors floating around about who he did things with or to, <laughs> these are the things he's actually being accused of by multiple people and the U.S. government. And as Bruce Rivers says, Guess what, Diddy? Diddy, I got news for you. There's a freight train coming, and you are tied to those motherfucking tracks. And your lawyer, he's got a chisel, he's got a blowtorch, and he's got all kinds of other tools in his toolbox. And nothing he can do can remove you from those tracks, because that train is coming, and that train is the U.S. government. So hopefully, as this investigation continues, not only are they able to lock Diddy up, but they're able to lock up everybody else who's been involved over this long period of time. And like I said, it would disappoint me if Usher was involved in any of this, but if he was, he needs to go down as well. Everybody can get these charges, okay? Get, get them all, because this is really sick shit that they were involved in. And it's wild that he's been doing this since 2008. You thought you were going to get away with this forever and, and just never be caught? That, that's crazy to me. Obviously, you shouldn't do any of these things from a moral stance, but clearly he has no morals. But just logically, you just thought, yep, I'm just going to keep doing this to, you know, dozens and dozens of women around the world, and it's never going to come back to haunt me. Crazy. Anyway, we'll see what happens with him, though. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all the next time. Bye!